Okay, as opposed to FIPO, LIPO has the entire has entirely the opposite concept. So we would assume that the latest purchase batch will turn into customers' hands first. So again, if we go back to this example, we have three purchase transactions. And if the first the first a thousand bottles that we'll be selling to customer will be choosing from these. We'll be assigning fifty two cents per bottle under LIFO method. Okay, last in, first out. Last purchase transactions, we assume if customer purchase Coke, then we will assign the latest cost to those transactions first. Okay, then when it reaches the 1,001 bottle, then again it goes to the second to last transaction, 51. Okay, and then the last part goes to the latest one, uh, the oldest cost. So older cost stays in the warehouse. We assume that older cost purchase transaction, oldest cost of um, the inventory that we purchased earlier, it stays in the warehouse. It turns into ending inventory costs, which again is inventory asset that you see on balance sheet. This is exactly the opposite of FIFO. So last and first out, latest transaction purchase cost is being assigned to cost of goods sold oldest cost stays in the warehouse and being assigned to ending inventory. If we go back to that exact same example, um, again, we start from the beginning inventory with two DVD sets, each of them at $40. This is exactly the same as FIFO. And then we purchase six more at $45 each. Again, this, up to this part is still the same as FIFO. We just add the purchase transactions in. Okay, FIFO, LIFO, the inventory costing methods comes to play a role when, it start, when we start to sell products to customer. So when we are again selling four DVD sets in the next transaction, then how would you assign the cost? Four DVD sets. You will sell the $45 one first, exactly. So we will be choosing four DVD sets from the latest batch, assign the cost based on $45. In the middle, you will see four times 45, 180. And therefore, ending inventory, we would have two from the older purchase transaction, two at 40, and then two at 45. Okay, we start from two at 40, we purchase in six at 45, and we start selling four DVD sets, we choose from the latest batch to assign the cost at $45. Okay, so you see the middle part, cost of goods sold, four at 45. So we have ending inventory two, assuming that it's from the earlier batch, and then two from the latest batch. Okay, now the following transaction, if we purchase an additional nine sets, and again, this part is just like FIFO, we just increase purchase transaction here in the purchase column, nine at 45, at 47. So if I add another journal transactions after this, let's say I'm going to sell an additional five sets, then which part would you choose from? $47. So if I'm selling an additional five sets after this transaction, then again, last and first out, I will be assigning this 47, the latest transaction, to the cost of goods sold expense. Okay. Let's do this last question again. Let's try to add this together with the ending inventory, this total amount here. See what's the number that you got. Cost of goods sold total amount and inventory on hand total. Just the latest column, latest row.
Did the number change? Total cost of goods sold expense here and ending inventory, if you add them together, what's the number? It's still 773. Okay, so this tells us what? This tells us that whichever methods you use, the total cost, which is the total inventory purchase cost, is the same. What we're trying to do is just assign whether 45 first or 40 first or 47 first. It's just a way to assign methods, but overall, if you add cost of goods sold with ending inventory, this is what we call total cost available for sale. The 773 is called total cost available for sale. Which basically is adding up the total inventory purchase transactions from earlier. So going back to this, total inventory that you purchase, it's either shifted to customer's hands or it stays in the warehouse. But whichever method you use, the total amount is always the same. Okay, this is what we call total cost available for sale. In terms of journal transactions, if we compare all the journal transactions that occurred here in the inventory record, if we want to journalize them, the only difference between LIFO and FIFO would be, again, just a blue shaded inventory costing transaction here. The upper purchase transaction, bottom purchase transaction is exactly the same. Sales, the retail price per product, again, is $80, the retail price that you'll be collecting from customer. But how we assign inventory costs is different using LIFO and FIFO. Okay, so remember earlier the bracket shows 2 times 40 plus 2 times 45, and now we have 4 times 45. Because the purchase transaction, the cost was different in each and every purchase entry. So when we assign the cost using different methods, what appears here, 180, is different from earlier what we've seen, 170. Okay, using different costing methods. Okay, now you've seen first and first 